Welcome, Hades here. And in this video, I wanna show you how you can do studies like this to develop your painting skills. So let's just get straight into it, starting with a sphere. Everything you need to know about values can be learned by painting a ball. And as you can see, we're going to look at these six values. I'm going to start off by filling the shape I made using the lasso tool with an 80% on the value scale. And here I'm using the HSV slider to pick the values. Just make sure the saturation is set to zero. To find the shadow value, I'm going to use the halfway to black rule. So I'll just take the light value and half it so we get a 40% on the value scale. This is just a good estimate for finding the shadow value in a daylight environment. The ref here isn't in daylight, but I'm going to use it anyway. So the light and shadow values are the most important here. These two values here give the illusion of form. Next, we have the midterm value, which is just where the light is starting to fall off. It's like a bridge between the light and shadow. For this, I just pick a value that's just the light value reduced by a quarter. So that's gonna be 60%. Then we have reflected light. The light from the light source is bouncing all around the room in this reference, and it's filling up parts of the shadow, as you can see. If this were outdoors, we'd also see this value as light from the sky, or it could also be a secondary light source. So for this, I pick a value higher than the shadow, but lower than the light and mid tone. So I went with a 50%. I added a darker value behind the shadows. You'll see why I do this uh, later on in the video. For the highlights, I just picked something that's higher than the light value and enough for it to stand out. Lastly, this ball is in contact with a table, so we get ambient occlusion. This is just where the light has a hard time getting to. Similar to the highlights, pick a value darker than the shadow value. So I chose a 20%. And one thing I want you to notice is that the shadow group of values are all darker than the light group of values. If you start mixing these, you'll run into muddy values, which we don't want. One thing I want to mention is the core shadow. This is an area on the sphere itself where the light is reaching the least. You'll see artists like Steve Houston really emphasize this in their work. And you can see some bounce light filling up part of the core shadow at the bottom. So I'm going to use an airbrush to darken my core shadow a bit. With the airbrush, you can build up your values. So I just picked anything fairly dark and then gradually built up the core shadow. And then after all that, we'll use a smudge tool to add a painterly look. When it comes to seeing values, we need to be aware that values will appear darker or lighter depending on the values around them. In this quick demo here, I created a gradient from pure black to pure white and I created a long brush stroke with a 50% value. And you can see the illusion working right now. You can see how the same value looks different on either end. Now let me create a new sphere here. I'm going to use an airbrush to add the shading. It's a lot faster. And I'll create a duplicate, but I'll give them different background values. Now see how the shadows appear darker on the white background and the light values appear brighter on the dark background. So if you want an area of your painting to stand out more, consider the values around it. Let's take a look at a box now and let's place a light source on the top right. Boxes are a lot easier to work with than spheres. We just need to consider the angle of the faces of the box compared to the light source. So let's say the top plane here is getting the most light. So I'll give that an 80% value. The side facing to the right is receiving less light. So I'll give that a midterm value of 60. And that last plane here isn't receiving light, so it's in shadow. And again, using the halfway to black rule, we just take our light value, which was 80%, and then half it to give us 40. Some of you may have noticed I made a mistake earlier with the ball demo. The value of the ground plane was 50%. So the shadow value should have been 25%. Uh, I did it correctly here. Now as it is, this box doesn't look very appealing. So let's add some reflected light and other value variations on these planes. And all I'm doing here is just picking the values of each face and just shifting the values by about five to 10% up or down. And then I just create a gradient across the face. And just by doing that, it just makes it more interesting to look at. And just for fun, I thought I'd add a glow effect at the bottom. And here I'm using a hard square textured brush with a bit of opacity jitter. Now that we've looked at the box and sphere, rendering other primitives should be easy. The curved surface of this cylinder is pretty much the same as rendering a ball. And the top plane you can treat like a box. As for a cone, 
The cone is very similar to a cylinder. We just no longer have that top lane. Now let me just quickly talk about diffuse lighting. What we will see is a more gradual transition from light to shadow and we'll see much more of the midterm value. In the future I'll make videos on colour and we'll look at how diffuse lighting maintains a lot of the local colour. Similarly here it maintains a local value. Edges are a big topic and I'll try and cover it a bit here. So we have hard edges all the way to lost edges. Edges are just a way to show how one shape relates to another. Recently I've been looking at painters who only use hard edges and I thought about how they relate shapes to one another. And it seems to be use of contrast. So I'd call a high contrast between two shapes as being hard edged and low contrast as being lost edges. If that makes any sense in the context of a painting with only hard edges, uh, it's just something I've been thinking about as that sort of painting style appeals to me quite a lot. Edges can tell us about how a form turns. For a sharp turn, we'll use a hard edge and for a gradual turn, we'll use a soft edge. Edges can tell us about the light source too. We'll see soft edges in diffuse soft light and we'll see hard edges when the light is hard. And lastly, we can use edges to create focal points like a DSLR camera. This is something I learned from Armad al -Dori. I've planned out my focal points so they create a circular eye path. And then I'll just grab the smudge tool and create edge variety. But I'll be sure to keep the focal points as hard edges. And everything else will either be a soft edge or a lost edge. To practice this, there's a reference pack you can download. I've been using this to study. And of course, the best way to learn is to put all this theory into practice. So let's do that right now. I'm mostly using the reference as a guide. I'm not trying to make a one-to-one -one copy. And for those of you interested, I will have the real-time time-lapse of this video process on my Gumroad. So as you can see here, I use the lasso tool quite a lot. I start off by adding the base values of each plane. And then I go back and add a value variation for more interest. And lastly, I'll go and add edged variety. And notice how I've varied the background values so that parts of the painting stand out more. Like I talked about earlier with the value illusions. Now if you want even more of a challenge, why not try doing a study of the Asara head? Even with something this complex, we still want to simplify our values. So I group all the light values together, all the shadow values together, and the midtones. And then from there, you can start rendering the smaller parts. So big picture first, and then small details later. Okay, that's all I have for you in this video. If you found it useful, leave a like, and let me know if you have any questions down below, and I'll answer them in the next video. I'll see you in the next one.